This time we will um, have my scripture on Romans chapter 8, verses 31 through 37. Just give a honk of my horn when you have reached your destination. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but deliver him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God elect? It is God that justify. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, ye rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also make intercessor for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquered through him that loved us. Romans chapter 8, verses 31 through 37. Can buy heads. Dear heavenly and gracious Father, once again we come before you to thank you for everything that you have done. We ask, Father God, that your word will be received upon this day, Lord, and that it will be able to change somebody's life. Oh, Father God, we thank you for each and everything that you have done. We ask that you will pour out your spirit upon the service, Lord, that some man may be blessed and receive the word. In Jesus' name we pray and say, Amen. Today's in conjunction of our theme, We Are More Than Conquer, the name of the sermon is called Drop All Charges. <laughs> Imagine you're in a courthouse charged with sin, condemnation, and fighting for your life. You hire some of the best lawyers known throughout the universe. The lawyers you have hired have yet to argue their case successfully. You are in the fourth quarter, down by three points. Now you're starting to sweat. Anxiety and fear have begun to set in. You look across the, the room and the prosecutor smiles because they know they're about to slam dunk. You start to pray to anyone or to the first person that comes to mind out of desperation. The goal is to achieve a Hail Mary. All battles aren't fought in a grassy field. The question become, who will you call on to argue our justification? Some of y'all are wondering, what is justification? And what does justification have to do with anything? As we know, the Apostle Paul wrote the book of Romans. When he wrote the epistles to the Romans, he argued for justification. In a nutshell, justification means we are not saved by our works alone, but through the sanctification of God's grace that saves us. Some people we know do not operate in God logic, but instead choose to follow man logic. They genuinely believe they can save themselves through good work. How I many I know some people who think they can do it all? They just know everything and know absolutely nothing. But I'm here to tell you, through the remission of sin, God sent his only begotten son to save us from our sins. Throughout history, Christians have been persecuted by different society. Even today's society, we are still being persecuted by the world for spreading the gospel. Men particularly have, have faced harsher punishment what could result in their demise. The prosecutor knows our history and choose to use it against us. During the trial, the judge sees from the corner of his eye that you're praying for your dear life. The judge decides to call a recess and enter to his chamber. Now the air is filled with confusion and, and, set, and has set into the courtroom. Everyone knows you are about to go down for the count. How many, how many of us have been counted out by everyone before the final verdict has been given? No matter what the situation was, they just knew it was over. But God had a plan for you and he made it possible for you to make it through. If the enemy would have known what was on the next page of the chapter, it wouldn't have tried so hard to take us out. I'm here to tell you that God has the final say-so. 
If God didn't ordain it, it will not happen no matter how much you try to make it work. Unbeknownst to you, the judge has read your file and knows your entire history from front to back. Everyone begins to take their seat and you have just been informed that your lawyer has been replaced. You hear whisper and murmur among the audience. Now you look shocked. You have no idea what just happened. Your faith has been shaken. You feel the rug has been snatched from underneath you and you think the world is against you. You ask yourself, what am I going to do? Panic sets in and you yell, oh no, and start to cry in the courtroom. Have you ever been in a situation where things got so bad you couldn't do nothing but cry? Cry in your sleep, cry in front of others, you just was a complete wreck. And it took the strength of God to pull you through. The prosecutor is having a field day with your anxiety and fear. The prosecutor knows in the back of their mind, you are done. The fat lady has song, she cracked the note, and she started singing again. The judge look at you and smirk. The judge shall order, or you will be held in contempt. In your mind, things went from bad to worse. And defeat set in. Some of you are so used to defeat that you fall like a lawn chair when it stares you in the face. But I'm here to tell you that it is not over. It is not finished. When God is in it, there's no end to it. God has been working on your behalf in the shadows. Please don't give up the fight. We are more than conqueror. If God is with us, then who can be against you? God is in it to win it. My God is impressive. He has never lost a case, and he's not about to start now. If you keep the faith, God will work on you on your behalf. Just tell God that you are willing to turn it over. No hell or devil can stop us. To your surprise, a person walk into the courtroom, and the prosecutor is fuming mad. You ask the judge, how is this possible? Because you cannot afford this lawyer, even if you sold your soul 12 times over. The courtroom goes into a frenzy with amazement. The judge start off the fourth quarter with a statement from Romans chapter 8 verses 31 through 37. Fear has caused you to forget the verses. The judge has brought back to your memory the verses. Verse 31 states, what then shall we say in response to this to these things. If God is with us, who can be against us? I don't think some of us, some of y'all have heard me. If God is for us, who can be against us? With God on our side, there is nothing your friends, your family, naysayers, your enemies can do about it. When God is on your side, he carries his favor upon your life. When God is on your side, the gates of hell cannot prevail against you. With God on your side, all things are possible. We must believe and trust in God. That will mean that God is the judge in the courtroom. How many of y'all can say that God is your judge and that he will deliver you through all pain, tribulation, and trial? We all know that God sees things and hears everything. He knows what you need before even you know what you need. As I stated before, God has the final say-so. Verse 32 solidifies this claim by reminding us that God's grace was given to us when he gave his only forgotten son for us to attain salvation. In verse 34 and 35, we are reviewing the charges right now, the justification, the condemnation, and the intercede. Verse 33 tells us, who shall lay anything to the charge of God elect? It is God that is justified. Who is God elect? Some of y'all may be wondering. In a biblical sense, elect means chosen. People cannot agree on who is the elect. Some people believe it means God chosen people. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 1. Others would disagree and say those who will inherit the mountains. Isaiah 65 and 9. Another group will argue it is those who will inherit the new heaven and earth. Isaiah 65 and 22. A good amount of people will say it is Jesus Christ. Isaiah 42 verse 1. The strongest evidence that we see is 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 1 through 2. Give a better definition. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ to the stranger scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Biana. 
elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. We know that God elect is no other than Jesus himself. God chose Jesus as his representative. This would mean that God knew that our defense attorney was no other than Jesus Christ himself. And that would mean the spectator in the crowd would be the angels in heaven. Verse 34, who is he that condemned it? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God? Who also made intercessor for us? Who is trying to condemn us? We don't have to look too far than the prosecutor himself, the devil. The devil would do anything and use anyone to get what he want. He will use your mother. He will use your father. He will use your brother. He will use your sister. Oh, he would definitely use your cousin, his favorite one to use, your favorite pets, and anybody else he can think, think of. The devil know how to trigger us in a way we didn't think was possible. We know the devil's mission is to still kill and destroy. What is condemnation? One who condemn or a state of condemn. The, dev the devil argued for condemnation and he urged God for the death penalty. The devil thought he had us, but I thank God for allowing Jesus Christ to advocate on our behalf. Jesus argued there was no condemnation. Whenever the devil called on a witness to assassinate your character, God will rebuttal the claim on your behalf. Have you ever know some people that will assassinate your character at every turn or every chance they will get? They will call you everything but a child of God. They will spread lies and rumors and ways that you didn't think was impossible and then they want to play victim when you try to check them. How many of y'all have been through that situation know that God will fix it no matter how hard they try to go against you? As we know, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Jesus pointed out that he already died at a rugged cross called Calvary, and he rose again on the third day. It was his blood that was shed that paid for our sin. Jesus argued that during the crucifixion, he already interceded for all believers to his father. The devil claimed that one person cannot cover the sin of all nations. Jesus made it known that he was God in the flesh. He was the Holy Lord of God, born of a divine virgin death. He received all power after blood was shed on Calvary. Once he fulfilled his promise, as it was foretold in the Bible, he was seated at the right hand of God. As a bonus, he left us the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us in our time of need. Verse 35 tells us, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or anguish, maybe prosecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? God loves us so much that he is willing to fight our battle when all seem lost. God was willing to spare his only forgotten son so that we may be free from sin. God was willing to spare us from all hurt, harm, and danger. God was willing to cancel the plan of the enemy. Honestly, who can separate us from Christ? Nothing can break us or separate from the love of Jesus. When we begin to operate the same way Jesus did, nothing can stop us. We can move mountain, perform miracles, and so much more. The love we experience from Christ is surreal. It is unrequited in nature. Verse 36 and 37. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Before we was before someone was introduced to Christ Himself, we were sitting ducks, ready to be taken to the slaughterhouse because of our fleshly desire. We will worship anything we thought had meaning. Meaning, while others who knew Christ didn't take it seriously, the enemy knew the lust of your flesh. We will quit once he once it satisfies our flesh and needs and desires, and you wouldn't hear a peep from them. Others would see it and stumble as well. The enemy could easily control us with our passion, mentally, physically, and emotionally. We were at the mercy of everything that were meant to harm us. Verse 37, nonetheless, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loves us. 
we are not only overcomers with great with okay. we are not only overcome with so great in, in misery and calamity but also more to conquer and all them things we live through Christ we have victory and no spiritual death or condemnation what is a conqueror a conqueror is a person who conquer places or people they are known as fierce warriors who fight in war and conquer other nations their skills their skill sets when unmatched and highly feared by the public all battlefields aren't created equal at conquerors you have to pick and choose your battle how are we conquerors more than conquerors through christ when we decide to walk with christ we will overcome with great power the power of christ when we turn our lives over to christ we are motivated by his glory when we told Christ we trust him, we will overflow with victory and have not lost a war since then. When we went to worship and told Christ that we love him, we were filled with the greatest love, conquering enemy with love and converting persecution with patience. We must be inspired to become more Christ-like. God asked the devil, if Jesus paid for our sin, who are we condemning? The devil couldn't answer the question. He deflected because he didn't have an answer to give to God. Just like that, the devil argument fell apart. How many of y'all remember when your back was against the wall and God had all the charges drop against you? Just give God the praise. If you know, you know. You know where your help comes from. Give God the glory. After reviewing the plank of claim, God asked the devil if he had anything else to add, and he couldn't utter a word, quiet as a church mouse. After reviewing the charges, God had no choice but to drop the charges against us. God wrote in his descent, because Jesus had died and interceded on our behalf, we were already justified through his love and grace. That will make us blameless. Therefore, there is no condemnation through Christ. The seasons, folks would say, I'm free. Praise the Lord, I'm free, no longer bound, no more chains are holding me, my soul is resting. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, I am free. How many of y'all have been on trial before and an enemy used everything and everyone against you? How many of you had your name dragged through the mud because people were mad at you? How many of you had friends and family try to use your past against you because things didn't go their way? I'm here to tell you where my help come from, the Lord. I know a lawyer who will help me get out of trouble when things are getting tough. I know a judge who will fight my charges. I know a defense attorney who will fight my battle free of charge and his name is Jesus. How many people know where your help coming from? God don't care about your past. He is more concerned about your future and where you are headed and your life calling. Your anointing has the power to break the yoke, perform miracles, and transform the lives of others. God don't care about your past. Some people must let go of the past and focus on the path ahead of them. God is calling you out of your dry place. He is calling you to a higher place. He is calling you to minister to the earth and to the nation of the earth. God wants to help you, but you must let go of the past. You must let go and let God have his way. You cannot have the same mindset from 30 years ago and think it will solve the problem right in front of you. A new situation requires a new perspective. The sooner you let go of the path, the brighter your future will shine. When you let go of the path, God will be able to move you in a way that you didn't think was possible. I dare you to get out to heaven that I am no longer bound by my past. I am free through the power and through the blood of Jesus Christ. God is not asking for much. God wants our praise and our worship. Can we praise the Lord for 30 seconds and tell him that he is awesome? Tell him that he is wonderful. Tell him that he is the king of kings and he deserves all the glory. He is the lamb of the God that saved us from our sins. He has done everything for us. Why would we want to be against us? He has stood by our corner when the world was falling apart and the world turned against us. When nobody was in our corner, he was there fighting our battles. Where everybody was against you, he was right there and, and just taking heat for you and fighting your battles for you. 
I'm here to tell you, just because somebody brings charges against you, does not mean God will not drop the charges against you. God will drop the charges and some more. All you must do is trust him. Through Christ, we are conqueror. With God on your side, all the charges will be dropped against you. With the Lord on your side, your record will be a sponge. With Christ on your side, all the conviction are gone. With God on your side, you are able to walk out that courtroom free, singing praise the Lord. God is, God is willing to help you if you let him help you. I don't know who it is, but you got to let go of your past and stop letting it hindering you from your future. We all, if you don't, you got to forgive some people. You got to let some stuff go. You got to remember what God did for David and Goliath. He helped David overcome his enemy. He helped David overcome those who was trying to plot against him and help him restore him to his, his, his crown. As I stated before, you can hire some of the best lawyers in the world and still go to jail. You could be down in the last quarter with no hope. People will count you out and start preparing for your end. But when God is on you and on your side, who could be against you? We are more than conqueror. Will you let go of the past and allow God to work through you? In conclusion, God has the final say-so. At this time, if anybody wish to be saved, but don't know how to be saved, or maybe they just don't want to come up and go in front of people because they might be shy, I just ask that you say this prayer with me. Dear God, which are in heaven, the one that sees everything, the one that hears everything, one that knows everything, we ask that you will clear our hearts, mind, and soul. We ask that everything that's not right with us, that you will make it right. Lord, we ask before you to make you our Savior, and we invite you in our lives. Lord, we ask that you will anoint us, and that you will give us the tools that we need to be successful in fighting the enemy, and to do everything that we have to do. Lord, we ask that you will save me from myself and from anything. We ask, Father God, that you will protect me from everything that may come my way.